now that we have our shots together, we're ready to export them. Aperture doesn't do any conversion. It puts out the same format that was put in. Uh, most of the time, that's great. But in our case, we'd really like to convert the H.264 files from the 5D Mark II to something a little more usable in Final Cut like ProRes. Uh, this is easy enough to do with compressor, but it seems like a lot of extra steps. So I use a combination of folder actions, an Apple script, and compressor droplet to do this conversion automatically. So let's see how that works. Uh, we'll go ahead and select the our two shots we're ready to export. I'm just going to right-click on them and go to Export. And now we have a couple selections here. Uh, since we have two video clips that we've trimmed down in, in the previous part, uh, we've got those trimmed down to just what we need. Um, so we want to export the versions, and that will give us a, our just our new in and out point uh, for our durations. If we export the masters, it will actually give us the the full sized full duration QuickTime file. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and select versions. And I have a folder set up here called automated with three folders in it. So we want to save these in the to process folder. And we're going to hit export. So when that happens, we're going to hide aperture and jump over to the finder. And we'll see in these uh, three folders here, uh, the to process one and Aperture started uh, copying our, our video files there. Uh, what's going to happen is this folder is actually a, uh, set up with folder actions. So anytime anything is copied into this folder, there's an Apple script in the background that says, hey, you need to do this. And in this case, this means to open those files with this compressor droplet called ProRes LT. So this was set up in Compressor to take anything, convert it to ProRes LT, and save it to this folder, which is my versions. So once that gets done, we'll start to see uh, the files uh, slotted in there. Now, thankfully, through the magic of uh, doing this uh, beforehand, uh, we've kind of already got something done. And this is one of the reasons why you really want to do this step. Uh, if we would have exported the full, the master version, without doing our trimming in Aperture 3, we'd end up with ProRes files just for two small clips that are each six seconds. Or for the full versions, un uncut, they are about a minute. Uh, you're looking at uh, 900 meg, and for our two 12 seconds clips, we're looking at about 145 meg. So this size difference not only saves you a ton of hard drive space, obviously, but time to copy the files uh, from hard drive to hard drive to archiving your projects. So it makes a whole lot of sense uh, to do this step in, in Aperture and, and still be able to do all the uh, keywording and, and organizing that we need to do. If you purchase the bonus material for this webinar, you'll get the step-by-step -step instructions for setting this up, the Apple script file, the folder set, and the compressor droplet all ready to use. So now that we got our files done, let's hop over to Final Cut Pro and import in those ProRes uh, files. And we've got them right there. And to show you that we, we're dealing with our ProRes now and we're all ready to drop them into our timeline and begin editing.